Your NPC, the woman you loved, hurt you. She misled you. She lied to you. She took your heart and played with it like a fucking toy. And just like a toy, when she got bored, she tossed it to the side. And the saddest part about all of this, if given the chance, you'd let her do it all over again. If she texted you right now saying, hey, I'm so sorry, let's talk about this. You're actually, listen, fuck, some of you might be in the process right now of trying to get this woman back. And I just wanna say, bro, please stop it. I remember the first date I had with my ex-girlfriend. We met at her apartment in the Bronx. And I know, right, yeah, in the Bronx. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. And she, she was a very dark emo chick, okay? She always wore fishnets, crop tops. She even cut herself, okay? Really dark and fucked up shit. And I was like a wannabe emo kid, okay? <laughs> I wore black all the time. I wore skinny jeans and I listened to nothing but Little Peep and Suicide Boys, like emo shit like that. So we linked up and we just kind of walked around the city for a couple hours. And during that time, I realized that we didn't have a lot in common, okay? So instead of bonding about normal shit, did a lot of trauma bonding. So instead of being like, like, oh my God, you love American Psycho too? What a great movie. Where instead like, wow, your dad doesn't love you either? That's crazy. So after a couple hours, we head back to her apartment and her parents are home now. So instead of going inside her apartment, we just kind of chill in like the little staircase that leads to the rooftop. Mind you, this staircase is fucking dirty and disgusting. So I, I assume nothing's gonna happen. We're just gonna chill, maybe vibe out, smoke or something, I don't know. But as soon as we're inside this little cramped ass staircase, we start making making out. Mind you, I am 20 years old at this point. This is literally my first kiss. Yes, bro. This girl and I shared my first kiss at 20 years old. It's a little, it's a little sad. <laughs> it's a little pathetic to talk about, but yes, that was my reality. After what felt like hours of making out, okay? Me and her go our separate ways. I walk her to her apartment door and I head home. As soon as I get home, I notice I received a text message from her saying, I'm sorry, I can't do this. You seem so nice though, but I'm not in a good headspace right now for to see anybody. I'm so sorry. I hope you're doing well. Immediately after our first date, which I thought went perfectly well, she tells me she wants to break up before we're even together. And what's even worse is that I had to like talk her into not breaking up with me, bro. I literally convinced her to stay with me. That's how down bad I was, bro. I was telling this girl, nah, you, you don't think like that. We can work something now. Just give me another chance. All this sad, lame shit after one date. So after I get successfully talking her into staying with me. This would be one out of the four times we broke up, bro. Sometimes I will hit her back up and convince her to stay again. Sometimes she will hit me back up and convince me to stay. But after the fourth time, that's when I realized it was kind of final because I gave her the power to decide, okay, this is the fourth and final time. I would call her, she would not pick up. I would text her, she wouldn't respond. I would try to, she unfollowed me off of Instagram. I would try to request to follow her page back because it was private. It would just stay unrequested. <laughs> She never accepted my request. So I, I was really sad at that point. I was really down, down low, down bad. I was not in a good headspace. And for a long time, I stayed in that unsafe, unwell headspace, bro. Because in my head, I thought since this relationship is over, everything is over. What's the point? I felt so empty. I felt like a part of me died that day. And at that point, my bad habits pretty much tripled. I was eating more. I was sleeping less. I was drinking more. It got to the point where I just looked in the mirror one day and I didn't recognize myself. I saw somebody who was a shell of what he used to be. I didn't like that shit. I hated my reflection. I wanted to fucking punch the mirror, bro. I almost had a movie moment like that. I'm not joking with you. But instead of lashing out in anger or doing what a lot of guys do and just wallowing my sadness, I told myself, I need to move on. I just have to move on. Everything will change. So that's what I did. And it's easy to say, bro, just move on. But how exactly do you move on? Please, bro, 
Listen carefully. First, you have to acknowledge that this breakup has made you a better man. Whether or not you was absolutely head over heels over this chick, it doesn't matter, okay? Going through heartbreak makes you stronger. It makes you mentally tougher. Your brain is no different than any other muscle in your body, bro. Just like when you go to the gym and do a fucking a thousand push-ups and suddenly your chest is on fire. And after a couple weeks of doing that, you have a fucking rock hard chest. Your brain is no different. Your brain goes through a lot a lot of traumatic shit, bro. But the thing is, the more shit it goes through, the tougher it becomes, the tougher you become mentally. That's why I tell guys to approach as many girls as possible, especially when you're not used to approaching women, because you have to get used to those awkward feelings. You have to become numb to rejection. You have to become numb to feeling like she doesn't want you. Once you get used to that feeling, once you get used to that fear, it no longer becomes a fear. It just becomes something you deal with. And after you deal with it, you move on. Most guys, they get rejected and they hold on to that rejection for months, years. If you're approaching as many girls as possible, you get rejected, no big deal. Fucking dust your shoulders off and keep it pushing. I want you to treat heartbreak the same way. It will never be as easy, but it will be easier. The next time you get your heart broken, and it will happen, you have to dust your shoulders off. You have to get up and keep moving and realize that now that you dealt with that, you're much much stronger than you were before the second thing you have to do is cut off all contact okay this might be the hardest part for some of you but it's absolutely necessary okay you can't still be following your ex on instagram liking her tweets on twitter fuck some of you still have snapchat streaks with these girls bro what the fuck is wrong with you you have to cut off all contact because the more you see it the harder it is to move on you're constantly reminded of the trauma you're constantly reminded of your sadness you're constantly reminded that you're alone you don't need that constant reminder in your life bro just unfollow her it's that simple imagine if somebody broke into your house took your kitchen knife and stabbed you with it but instead of dying you survived you made it out the hospital and you're good and you get home and you see that very same kitchen knife that almost kills you just laying in your kitchen sink are you gonna wash it fucking continue to cut tomatoes and carrots with that shit no right then why are you still following her why are you still following the person who almost mentally killed you bro get rid of the murder weapon before it's too late now lastly if you really want to move on you have to make yourself better you have to improve you have to focus on self-improvement i'm sure you don't look as good as you want to look right maybe you're not super satisfied with your body right i'm sure your money isn't where it needs to be right i'm sure your mental health isn't where it needs to be right what are you doing what do you waiting for you need to be working on your side business you need to be in the gym almost every single day you need to be meditating journaling you need to be doing something something productive something that will make you better than you were yesterday all the successful entrepreneurs they already know this you think Iman Ghazi is crying about his ex you think Hamza Ahmed is crying about his ex you think Alex Hamozi is crying about his fucking ex of course not if you want to be like them which odds are you probably do you can't be doing this bro you can't be crying about women who don't even cry about you some of you can die tomorrow and these girls might not even shed a tear let alone come to your funeral but you're down bad over her sorry you have to do better and i know there are some npcs watching this and thinking nah bro this girl she's different okay she was the one for me how can i move on for somebody who completes me bro there's no such thing as the one there's only one of many Everyone is replaceable, men and women. Not to sound cliche, but do you know how many women are there on the planet? It's almost 4 billion. And you think that this one girl was the only one for you. Like, do you know how egotistical you sound right now? This is something I talk about in this course I'm working on called Finding the One that will soon be available on the chat community, link in the description below. This is my paid private community if you haven't heard about it already. So click the link in the description if you want to check out more information on it. But something that most chads already know that NPCs can't seem to comprehend, when you're chasing your dream, women chase you. And that is especially true for the 
girls who rejected you, the girls who turned you down, the girls who broke your heart. Cause they see you shining. They, sh they see that you're ambitious. They see that you're on the road to success and they want to be on that same road. Okay. And since they have easy access because they think, well, he, he, he wanted to fuck me before. Right. So now that he's shining, I can just take a little bit of that shine. Right. I can take a little bit of that light. Hey, how you been? How you doing? Long time no see. I had a dream about you. Oh, I miss you so much. When you're on the road to success, when you're killing it, that's how you know you're really killing it when you get text messages like that. But when you're chasing these girls, trying to convince them to stay with you like I used to do, they'll reject you every single time. They will look down on you every single time. And they should, because you need to do better. You need some type of self-respect. You're lacking that right now, chasing these girls who don't give a fuck about you, crying about these girls who don't give a fuck about you. You need to do better because the NPCs that continue to cry over women who don't shed tears about them, they die alone. I don't want you to die alone. I want you to die with a beautiful family around you. That's how I want to go out with my wife by my side, my kids and my grandkids watching me. It's going to be beautiful. That's how I want to go out, okay? Not alone laying in bed after jerking off the night before. Don't be like that, bro. Be a Chad. Be the guy who chases his dreams and women will chase him because they know this road will lead to success. I love you, brother. I'll see you in the next video.